So I don't know when this link's going to run out, but it's just crazy stuff. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. So remember I've been messing around with the Mesh-tastic stuff. So if you don't know already, these are little off-grid messaging devices that allow you to send messages to and from each other without the internet. So they're completely off-grid, they don't use any cellular infrastructure or anything like that. You can just do messages to and from these devices. And also the more of these that you have in an area, they link together automatically, don't have to do anything. So they create a mesh network that you can route messages across over the mesh. It's so cool. It's called Mesh-tastic. Anyway, if you want to know more about how it works, I've linked some videos below. But meanwhile, I've been doing a lot of testing and messing around with this stuff, just generally just playing with it, and it's just been so much fun. So one of the tests I want to show you today is using different antennas with these devices. So these little ones here, they come, you can buy them like this, basically you have to put them together, but they do have an antenna connector, and you can connect external antennas to them. When you do this, it opens up a whole world of new connections, because basically, let's face it, a little antenna like this, this on the side inside your house is not really going to get you many connections. I mean, if you took this device up somewhere really high or put it up in a window, maybe in a block of flats or something like that, it would definitely get out a lot better and you might not even need to use like an external antenna. But for most of us, we're probably not in an area with a really good line of sight. So external antennas can help get your signal out really far. So this is probably a good place to mention we've now got a Mesh-tastic channel set up on my Discord. So I'll leave the link below to that so you can join the Discord if you're not already. So look at this, there's been a lot of activity recently including this amazing contact someone's basically just gone up a hill um, and made a 23 mile contact um, which is just insane and that was just with one of the Helltech nodes standard antenna I think um, but yeah you can see loads of stuff going on here antennas <laughs> and it's absolutely awesome you also see my updates as well um, I've been doing some making some solar powered nodes playing around with a high gain Yagi antenna as well and that is what I want to show you today. So guys, this is the beast that I grabbed. This is basically a 12.5 dBi gain Yagi for 868 megahertz. So it's a pretty good antenna. As you can see, I've purchased two of them. <laughs> um, I've tested them out as well, and actually this is pretty accurate, this kind of um, readout. This showing you the SWR. It's pretty on point. Actually, it's a bit lower than that. I've found it around 1.15, something like that, SWR, which means it's it's kind of pretty well tuned for the for the band, which is what you want. Um, now, these antennas, I mean, it's not particularly cheap, um, but they are very, very well made. The brand is actually Paradar. You can actually see on the website, their own website, they've actually got it up for like a lot more money. It's unusual that stuff's more expensive on external websites. It's usually the other way around more expensive on amazon to cover the the shocking fees that amazon charge sellers but anyway so i grabbed one of these to try so to connect external antennas to these things you're going to need these little pigtails here these are like sma um to ipex so if we take our little Helltech version 3 board here you can see that little gold connector there that's the antenna connector um and there's obviously this um, pigtail plugged into it so that's an ipex or ufl um i believe it's called so that's what you want to find basically these ones I'll leave a link below but that then gives you a little SMA socket which you can use to attach other antennas so you could for example attach this little 868 megahertz antenna it's got to be 868 LoRa um, for this to work guys um, and I think this is probably designed for like a like a helium miner or something like that there is another thing you need to be aware of though because the actual connector on these is usually this type which doesn't have a center pin so if you go and connect that to this SMA there's going to be no contact contact between the two so you've got to watch that so this little adapter will fix that basically it's got pins on both sides so that will actually make contact with the antenna and then the other one will actually connect to your your pigtail there this sort of antenna will definitely help your range a bit but maybe not as much as some would expect so to connect the Yagi up or any external antenna, you're going to need one of these. Ideally, what you want to do, I've got a runaway 21700 there. So to connect up more of a base station antenna, there's lots of these available for lower that cover 868 megahertz. Normally they come with an N-type female connector, the opposite to this. So you're going to need another little adapter lead and that will just connect up to that pigtail there. Now that's not very much coax from your node to your antenna. And the reason we're doing that is to avoid losses. At these frequencies, every meter of coax you use 
you're going to lose loads of signal both incoming and outgoing as well so yeah that's why it's a good idea to have your node actually mounted very very close to your antenna to eliminate a long run of coax and the great thing about these is they have bluetooth and wi-fi as well so you can still connect to the node if it's outside what i like to do is just put it in a little waterproof project box like this this one isn't very waterproof actually to be honest but i'll just take them up you can drill holes for the connector and also another one for power these little boxes came with these little cable insert things that seal up when you tighten them up and just clamp down on the cable so that's quite good but if it's going to be left outside on a pole or something permanently you're probably going to want to sort of seal up the box nice and good with some self amalgamating tape but one thing i have found is you might get a bit of condensation inside the box because these things generate a slight bit of heat um, so maybe a bit of ventilation in there that is on the underside that water's not going to get into will probably help that but basically by doing that the only long bit of wire you're going to have is the power going to the box and you're going to eliminate having a really long run of coax which is really lossy right got all of that then if you are new to this this might seem a little bit overwhelming but you know this is part of the hobby and it is fun messing around with antennas well we find it fun anyway so let's go and test this out the yagi is now on the pole i've got the node in the project box below it let's go outside and do some range tests so there's the yagi out there and you can see the little project box underneath um, and we're basically that's pointing towards the town so that's where we're going to go we we'll do some um, some range tests right okay just testing it's working we're about 300 meters away um, I've got my base station kind of beacon in every minute I know that's probably a bit naughty but I've got it doing that for this range test so then I don't have to do anything with the phone I can just use this little device now this place with the loft mounted antenna was a bit tricky because we're sort of in a in a bit of a dip but I have just received the beacon from it so that's good it might have come from I've got another node over there somewhere um, <laughs> in another house but um, I don't think it has I think it has come from from this one so another one at 606 meters away absolutely fine signal 56% as well right we're in amongst all the trees and stuff at the moment down this sort of little back alley bit and we have got a beacon <laughs> it's just crazy isn't it we're sort of dropping down into this bit now where the railway goes so let's see let's see if we've received the beacon that was in my pocket it was only 25 seconds ago it received i've literally just received one on this bridge and it's basically metal so and we are 925 meters away so nearly a kilometer away now and signal 13 percent but um yeah still going strong right just in the town now so we have actually received one a little while ago but i'm gonna try again just have to wait for it to go round. all right here we go no problem at all <laughs> interestingly look the signal's gone back up to 25 percent so the signal strength on the screen as we know is it's kind of just a guide it's going to go up and down so right in the center of the town you can see two minutes ago was the last beacon we received so so it's tricky in such a built-up area like you've got all these buildings and stuff like that that's why you sort of need to have oh no they actually did receive one <laughs> it's mad so it's a bit bit further into the town now and see if it pops up there you go it's saying zero percent now but yeah we are obviously in amongst loads of noise and everything else but it's crazy we're pretty much we haven't got that far to go before we're actually out of the town now right not quite at the 2k mark but i'm behind this sort of multi-story so that's never really good is it the gps has just updated it is pretty much two kilometers now <laughs> gps is having a hard job i think there you go there's the beacon <laughs> stay over at this nice weir now and there's the beacon right a bit further on at this park so as the crow flies home is sort of over that way um so let's just have a look let's just take it out of my pocket because it's been in the pocket and you wouldn't expect it to pick up a signal in there but it did 30 seconds ago <laughs> oh that is crazy isn't it so you can sort of see why mobile phones work so well because they're in your pocket they haven't really got much of an antenna or the casing could be the antenna but generally it's compromised antenna isn't it so it shows you that i mean you literally don't need much of an antenna as long as the base station is high up and has got a really good takeoff and maybe some gain like you're laughing 2.8 kilometers 12 seconds ago to see another beacon in the park a little bit further on now 3.2 kilometers basically i'm trying to head to this bridge up here that would be a good goal if we get that far we might even go further but yeah 
39 seconds ago. Waiting for another beacon, but I haven't had one for two minutes now, so maybe this is not a particularly great area, but it's kind of weird because we've kind of got beacons everywhere else. Right, nearly at the bridge. The bridge is a bit of a reference point because I've done a lot of like kind of radio tests um, featuring that bridge. And it kind of marks the end of one town and the beginning of another. So let's just see if we get a signal. I mean, we, we actually have received a beacon 53 seconds ago. So let's just see. There you go. And interestingly, did you notice that? That 16% signal. So the signal's come back up again. So I don't know when this link's going to run out, but <laughs> it's just crazy stuff. So here we are at the bridge, four kilometers away, and let's wait for the ping to come through. I'm pretty confident about this. I shouldn't say this, but I'm pretty confident. Um, so 120 seconds. There you go. I was getting wide for a second, but there, there it is. I'm loving this e-bike as well, guys. It's really cool. It's a nice time of year, but it is cold. There you go. 16 seconds ago on this bridge that is 4.4 kilometers and that is glaxo smith Klein there right back in the wall now so that was pretty impressive i'm really really impressed with that and that is not even the long range mode there's other modes that you can use which changes the spreading factor and stuff um, that makes it go a lot further it's one of the things that helium does kind of to make you know the distances get really insane also remember this is pretty much an urban test apart from the you know the bit at the end where i kind of went out into the open a little bit more but in the town we were getting a signal no problem at all which is just yeah it's quite I wasn't expecting that because with the buildings and stuff like that at these frequencies you kind of like you know you've got to go some to get through all of that but because this frequency is quite high you can get the signals bouncing off of objects and stuff so you know you get this kind of knife edge diffraction that goes on and that comes into play but ultimately what you've got to remember is this is quite a big ask when you're talking about a base station to a ground base station with a compromised antenna you know it can only get better from there so maybe if I was to go into one of those buildings in the town and go upstairs near a window the signal is going to be better also if somebody else was to set a station up in the town and had an antenna outside or up a bit then you're going to get a really solid connection from there actually when i went out for a meal that evening i did actually take one of these little helltechs with me in my pocket and i did notice that i did actually get a ping from the base station inside um, a restaurant somewhere which is pretty nuts i mean yeah that is crazy also i have actually made some cool contacts one of them was my big sis she was out walking her dog on the saturday morning and i noticed the message just popped through and she was a good like four five kilometers away i gave her one of my hell text to work with her iphone and she just fired it up and sent me a message so that was a nice surprise and then on from that another guy who watches the videos set up a little mesh and he's probably about five miles away from here something like that and we actually made contact as well it's been a bit sporadic so we might have to do some stuff with antennas to kind of get it a bit better but proof that it works absolutely fascinating stuff we were both blown away that we actually made a contact really really cool so it's absolutely amazing that other people are out there playing around with this stuff as well there's also a mesh-tastic community map as well which you don't have to put your exact location on or your name or anything like that but you can kind of mark a position of where you roughly where you are um, so other people can see that there is activity in that area that's kind of cool i'll leave a link for that um, below as well also don't forget about discord as well there's loads of conversations happening there i think one guy is up a high rise today like trying to make contacts which is pretty cool i think he's, he's at work basically but <laughs> or meant to be but also that brings me on to another thing me and lewis ringway man stuff if you follow his channel you know what i mean if not uh, where have you been but yeah basically we're going to be going to london tomorrow thursday the 14th of december and we're going to be up somewhere really high so we're going to be on Tastic on the primary channels long fast and long slow around about one o'clock just after 1 p.m probably so keep an ear out in theory we should be covering a massive area because it is very very high this secret location so stand by for that also we might be doing two meters from up there as well so vhf ham radio so yeah we might make contact one way or another catch you next time